Hey, what's up? You. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Brian Jones, CBS Sports Network. So how's your show going, man? The show's going great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Chris Moore, Seymour, and you've met our producer, Adam Noodles Gracia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I Noodles. did the show. It's fun. Yeah, you've done the show exactly, yeah. and uh, it's 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 been it's been a riot. Good. I mean, yeah, well, now they haven't what? fired my ass yet, so it's cool. <laughs> How do you like talking sports uh, off season with the? F- even though I hate I mean, it. I mean, listen, it's it's football no. has become a thing where it, it's a it's a twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five days a, a, a year. And then you want to make it even more so event. moving the draft yeah. back and. All last, last month, I'm sitting there. I got ESPN is on, and they're, they sh- they're showing the Alabama spring game. Yeah. Uh, they're showing a scrimmage, oh. Alabama. And there's 90,000 people there. Yeah, oh, oh my because God. Because there's nothing to do in Tuscaloosa. What do you think, uh, w- what are some teams you think that really improved so far in the offseason that, that might make a, like a... From a, a collegiate level or NFL? No, NFL. NFL. Uh, well, I, I like the draft of the Minnesota Vikings. They yeah. went out and got a lot of help in, in a number of different areas. Uh Cordell Patterson's the wide receiver. A lot of people had him later on their boards, but there's no denying his talent. He's yeah. got the talent. Is he raw? Of course. Yeah, he's raw. He's going to have to grow up. All these guys are going to have to grow up. But I like what they did. I like what the Jets did. Everyone's saying, well, you don't get rid of your best player who's a cornerback and then go draft a cornerback. Yeah, you do. It's a big void now. Yeah, why you go not? out and yeah. you go get D. Milner. Uh, so I like that. I like the Sheldon Richardson pick as well. And there's some, well, he doesn't fit their model. Well, there's more hybrids today on the defensive side. You don't just stick with one, you say a 4 3 or 3 4. You play a yeah. mixture of things. And here's well, a guy who. Especially if you're the Jets. Right. Man. That's what uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they need a ton of help. And, and you know, they're going to use that guy a myriad ways. And he's going to, they, they, they probably want to, and a lot of teams want to do this. You know, in the league, it's all about. Uh, imitation uh, you see someone doing something great then you try to copy what they do and so uh, they, they're going to use that NASCAR package like the Giants do just put four defensive ends in there on third downs and, and let them get out the what's that called a NASCAR, NASCAR package, NASCAR package. What, yeah what, what does Wait, that they mean? just got fast guys on the defensive line yeah. <laughs> put smaller guys going uh, after the quarterback and now. they can and they can just kind of move around and make right. it really hard for an offensive line to figure out who they're blocking yeah so first of all figuring out who you got that's the first step out once you then you got to actually block exactly. these smaller, faster guys. Yeah. Makes That's it where really like a guy in your old situations. position comes up, where you got to pick somebody up yeah. and fall back. And you got to kind of cover up the 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 problems. Well, that's why so blitzing is so big, and and that's why coaches love it because you you have all the rewards of a, your traditional blitzes without the risk. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got guys moving around on you, you know, and you may look like this guy's in the box, you account for him, then he ends up dropping back in coverage and right. someone else comes. So it's very confusing. That's why at the next level, it's all about mental. Yeah. It's a, you got everyone's fast. You got to have you got to have instincts, man. You got to you got yeah. to have instincts that uh, you know, being able to improv like like, like a jazz band or something. You got to know when to do this. But the thing with what you did, John, which always impressed me is when do you decide to okay now I'm not blocking now I'm going to drop back and become a receiver like like well that's that's tough. how last second right. is with, that decision? with today's defenses you really got to scan the entire mm-hmm. field because I mean you could be blocking it could be a slide protection we got inside backer to outside backer to safety on this side you check those three guys and you're about to release but they could be cat in the corner from the back side yeah. he's your guy too so you can't keep you can't fix your field of vision you kind of just have to keep be your head on, on a swivel. Well, that's when you, you got to come back underneath. Player. Right. And, and, you know, it's not enough to say, okay, I took care of my assignment, coach. No. Okay, you took care of your assignment. There was nothing there. Then hunt for work. And then cover, you yeah, go cover above, for your teammates. You got to go above your And assignment. then you release. Yeah. So you're telling me Liberace was hanging out with Packers. <laughs> yep. Speaking of, play speaking the of hunting for work. Play this, play come on. Figuratively. Okay, no this, is, this is the movie about Liberace the other night. Did this Packer player go to Stanford? This is Michael Douglas. Because they got something going on in Stanford. I know, man. This is Michael Douglas. That? Listen, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon. Michael Douglas playing Liberace in bed. This is what he tells him. You know, I am so sick of getting fan mail about my engagement to Sonia Henney. <laughs> As if I would marry an ice skater, please. I mean, those thighs. Hmm. No, I was a goner for my first time. He was a Green Bay Packer. <laughs> <laughs> he was packing. He came to hear me play in one of my saloons. I mean, I couldn't miss him. The guy was the size of the door. <laughs> That's how I lost my virginity. Oh, wow. Isn't that that virginity? Romantic? <laughs> and he lived to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The size of the door. Now, what do you Apparently, think? everything was the size of the door. <laughs> now, what do you think about that? Of course, this proves that there's been gay guys in football oh, forever. Oh, yes. So, of course you know, there have. It's, 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 it's just no big deal. But what, yeah. do you think, uh, what do you think a guy like Paul Horning would think about this? 
Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Paul is, has a ton of opinions, and he's not uh, afraid of expressing them. We want to get them. We want to get him on here. There, there, see, what would he have thought about it? There's a reason we didn't know about this Packer player and many other players way right back when because of their, they were afraid of what not only their teammates would say, but what society at large it sounds like would he's, say. It sounds like he was a great player, too. Probably I mean, was. 1939 Packers the, won it all. They won it all. That so. was 1939? 1939. Yeah. Well, Liberace was a kid. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> took, took Liberace's virginity. Well, yeah, it's been it's been here since beginning of time. So yeah. it, it, we, we're just late coming to the party. Right. Well, uh, I uh, we, we want to try to get Paul Horning on the phone. I, want, I, want, I would love to hear him talk, uh, 77 years old. Because a lot of these old guys, sometimes they'll just give their, like, real opinion and forget about political correctness. Right. Jerry Jerry Lewis is at that point now. Jerry yeah, didn't Lewis, he just say something recently? Once, yeah. again, once again at the Cannes Film Festival, this is like the third time he said this in 10 years, he said women aren't funny. Uh, he just plays. <laughs> I just love that he's 87. He's like, I don't care. I'm gonna die. Here's my opinion. I think not, I don't think they're funny. I don't think they're funny. Well, maybe he's listening to the wrong female comedian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's probably listening to his ex-wives. Yeah. Is there, ta- funny. Is, is there tape of that anywhere? I wish there was. We they're should not try to find funny. tape. Of that. <laughs> Come on. I just did a roast with him and he humped me. Yeah. He humped you. Dry uh, he thought yeah. you went to Stanford? Well, no. <laughs> well, what's up with Stanford? What's because going on all the gay guys went to Stanford. No, Did well, they? Okay, there was Jason Collins, of course. Kwame right. Harris? Quaim, yeah, Quaim Harris. Is it is Quaim guy. or Kwame? He, it's Quaim. Quaim. Well, he I, was, that he tells was you right there. Supposed was to be retired. Well, that, that makes sense. I'll tell you, if you're a high school kid and you're looking for tolerance, that Stanford's in the San right, Francisco right. area. You, it makes They're sense. You big, would go there. They're huge. Yeah. Quaim? Yeah. yeah. That's how you put it. I thought it was Kwame. Yeah, I, I did too. After the old rapper hip hop guy. I met, I know the guy somewhat. He's huge. He He's is. Massive. He was a big offensive lineman. He got into it with his, his former boyfriend about soy sauce. He did. Oh, is that why? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Soy the reason sauce. he ended up coming out, it was after <laughs> he retired, but he was in Santa Clara courts for I'm, I'm domestic abuse. Sauce. Oh, they got on, no fight. With yeah. his uh, Over soy lover. sauce? Yeah, I'm saying, girl, hey, girl, bring that soy sauce with you. Well, Come listen, I, <laughs> that's as good an argument as any. <laughs> I, I get into that. <laughs> yeah. I, I've argued over food with women like the most passionate is, is always about food. Right. Don't <laughs> give them the last piece. We're going to take a quick break and finish out the hour with the great Brian Jones on the Audio Lecture.